Hello and welcome to Spread Book Joy. Today I'm doing a recommendations video for the Picture This Readathon. If you're new to the channel, I'm Jack, and if you're not new, welcome back to Spread Book Joy. And today I'm doing a recommendations video for the Picture This Readathon, the amazing month long readathon I'm running alongside the wonderful Shelley Swearingen, promoting the idea that picture books are for everybody. So if you've not heard of the readathon before, I'm just going to put um, a link to both announcement videos in the description box and let's get started. So the prompts for our readathon are one word prompts which you can interpret in any way you choose. We are not precious about how you interpret them and we've just deliberately done it that way to make it nice and broad um, and allow people to have, be creative with their choices. Shelley's prompts are friendship, green and home and my prompts are quiet, red and space. I was going to do recommendations for each of the one word prompts, but I decided that actually when I was looking through the books, lots of them cover multiple prompts. So instead of talking about the prompts and then the books to match, I'm just going to talk about books and tell you which prompts those books match. Hope that makes sense. First of all, I'm actually just going to talk about a specific illustrator, um, author illustrator called John Classen, or Clausen, I think it's pronounced, who is a Canadian illustrator who most famously uh, works with um, the author Mac Barnett and they've produced tons of amazing books. Um, he's worked on this one with Lemony Snicket and he's got his own really famous series of books um, which I had to get from one from the library because I don't have them but uh, the first book is I've Lost My Hat, This Is Not My Hat and then We Found a Hat which is a trilogy um, all around these really hilarious creatures who just have managed to be really really expressive with very little fe very few features on them and they still manage to be really really expressive so um, John Clausen is someone I've picked and I want to recommend as someone who uses space in his books he's a highly entertaining um, illustrator his illustration style I think is really um, engaging and playful and fun but his use of space um, which is really well sort of demonstrated with this book the dark which is by lemony snicket it's about a boy called laszlo who's afraid of the dark um his use of space throughout the book to show you the dark is really genius actually um this is a really lovely tale of a boy overcoming his fear of the dark and the dark is personified throughout the book um and yeah it's just a wonderful book but if you can look through you see the use of space is really key to this story and the way it evolves but if you look through any of his other books, you can just see the the humour in them and also just the way that there's just barely anything on the page, um, but so much story. You can get so much out of these stories. There's barely anything on them, but you can get a lot out of reading them. These ones I find really humorous. The Rock from the Sky, which is, I think is his most recent book. Um, and I got this out of the library as well because I don't own it, but I do want to get myself a copy. Um, and it's like a series of these vignettes with these particular characters that make appearances in all of John uh, Clausen's work. And um, by the end of it, sort of, the, the, there's a, a whole series of these small episodes that happen with this big rock that falls out of the sky. And they're just really, really funny. So on my TBR, I have Sam and Dave Dig a Hole by Mac Barnett and illustrated by John Clausen. And this, again, is about, this covers the um, prompts friendship because Sam and Dave are friends and it covers the um, prompt space because of the way that John Clausen uses space in his illustrations. Sam and Dave just decide they're going to dig a hole and they want to find something spectacular um, and I don't know if you can spot it as we go through they keep digging and their dog seems to be spotting spectacular things but they are just completely missing them the entire time it's a really really funny book very very clever and again a book where actually if you didn't have the illustrations you would miss the entire point or the entire uh, joke of the story Taking the space prompt a bit more literally to mean space and outer space, I'm going to recommend Mr. Waffles by David Wisner. And this kind of fits in with quiet because one of the things I thought about for quiet were wordless books. Now, it's not completely wordless, but the majority of it um, all the way through, um, it's about these aliens who land from outer space and they encounter a savage earth beastie. And um, yeah, so it's um, really very funny. Uh, very humorous and there's the savage earth beastie that they encounter mr waffles 
sticking with quiet, being wordless. One of my absolute favourite wordless picture books of all time is Journey by Aaron Becker. It's the first in a trilogy. The second book is Quest and the last book is Return. And it's all around this young girl who um, goes on a magical journey. Um, completely wordless picture books with the stories beautifully told. And this is why I've gone for this for quiet. But it also uh, matches my prompt of red because the use of the colour red throughout so if we have a look at the first page we see the girl and um, there's very little colour in her life she's seriously bored she's at home with her family she seems lonely and bored and the only colour we can really see is the red um, scooter and at home she tries to get her parents attention so all of her toys if you notice the ball the kite uh, the scooter are red and then she's sitting alone in her bedroom and if you just watch the cat very carefully, when the cat gets up, underneath the cat is a red crayon. And this red crayon is magical. She draws a door and she goes through the door and she goes on her journey. Um, and the book is just wonderful and magical. So when she goes through the door, this is where she finds herself. And she goes on the journey through this magical land with this red crayon, red magic crayon. Colour plays an amazingly important part in this story. And I won't say any more because of spoilers, but this is one of my absolute favourite picture books of all time. Beautiful, beautiful storytelling. One more wordless picture book for you, um, which also could go for the theme of quiet. And this one also, um, for me, can also express the theme of home, the prompt home, which is one of uh, Shelley's prompts. And this is Footpath Flowers. There are some videos to go with some of these, which I'll put links to in the description box below. So if you can't get hold of the actual books, there is a video of Footpath Flowers on YouTube, which I will link. Um, and it's just a beautiful story of a young girl and the use of colour, again, throughout this wordless story is phenomenal. So the beautifully beautiful illustrations of a father and his daughter and they're on their way home from shopping and the little girl spots things that um, on the way that, you know, it's quite an urban built up environment. The only colour to start with is her red coat and that's why it matches the prompt red and she's just looking all around her and noticing things like she notices this man's tattoos um, and she notices um, fl flowers so the footpath flowers and she starts to pick them and as she picks the flowers she more and more colour comes into the images but she's just noticing beauty in the most sort of least scenic aesthetically beautiful places but she's noticing it because she's just looking around her with curiosity and yeah you see the pictures but as she goes along she also um, starts giving the flowers away and you get more and more colour in the book until she eventually um, arrives home so it's a really beautiful book another one for red is Sean Tan's The Lost Thing because it's all around just a thing if you've never read this story before it's a bit of a puzzler a bit of a head scratcher um, but it's really fascinating the way that he illustrates and the things that he thinks about um, and the reason I've chosen this for red is because the, the lost thing of the title is red one of my favourite picture books in recent years, I Go Quiet by David Wiemay, for my theme of quiet. This one isn't wordless, it is just about a very introverted young girl and her internal rich world um, and how she sees the world around her. So she's quite introverted and lonely and um, this means that she's quiet a lot of the time. So it's just hauntingly illustrated. I just find these illustrations, the, the detail in them is beautiful. Um, it's very surreal, but it kind of expresses if you've ever been a quiet, in, introverted uh, person in your life, you might still be one now, you might have been one as a child, and I think it expresses it beautifully. So everywhere she goes, um, she feels misunderstood and a little bit out of joint with the rest of the world. And she's if you notice she's got a mask a mouse mask on her back there she goes into school she's got a mouse mask and everyone else around and they're all cats and you can see that she captures that feeling of almost being stared at or talked about when i walk into a room i hear whispers um and yeah that's something that i when i read it just reminded me of when i was quite a quiet introverted child at school so um she says she doesn't know how she's supposed to be, how she should sound, how she should look, um, and she just feels completely just separate from everybody else. But she has this rich 
inner world that she discovers through books and reading and yeah it's just stunning beautiful book a follow-up to i go quiet and it's called i get loud um and i get loud is just equally as lovely but this is for the theme of friendship because our introverted heroine from the first book discovers a friend a soul a kindred spirit a kindred soul as um and shirley from anne of green gables might say so she discovers um a friend and um but in the course of the story they're displaced from where they live so i thought this might really match well for the prompt of home as well um and you know that feeling of of, of wanting a home or not having a home um something that is happening to a lot of people around the world at the moment being displaced because of war or other things happening in their own home countries um so yeah this would match those prompts so for Shelley's prompt of green and for home um I've got one of my favorite oh also it's wordless so only a couple of words in this book so um it would match the what the quiet prompt the balcony by Melissa Castrion Melissa Castrion is one of my favorite illustrators and I'm going to do a specific video on her work as part of picture this um as part of my content for picture this but just look at her illustrations they're absolutely stunning so the balcony is just a beautiful book about a family who move from the countryside and they go to live in the city um, and the young girl is living in the countryside with her family and she's surrounded by nature and animals and plants and she's extremely happy there and then she gets uprooted and moved to the city and you can see the sort of subtle changes of the the colour palette um, which is quite beautifully um, like it's a beautiful colour palette it's kind of limited but um, you can see as we go into the city it gets greyer and more boxy and less natural um, but she ends up um, growing her own plants on the balcony so I thought this would be a good one for green it'd be a good one for home and for quiet because it is wordless and it would be a good one for friendship too because she does eventually make friends in her new home continuing with the theme of green and um, quiet the prompts green and quiet I've got the another David Wisner book Tuesday Tuesday is actually also quite a surreal story if you've not read it before but something that happens on Tuesday at around 8 p.m something strange starts to happen and it involves some frogs um, from a swamp which is why they, this is what happens they just pick up on their lily pads and start flying and they fly all around town and cause mischief in a number of different places so um yeah it's, it did make, make you think when i was thinking um shelly's prompt green this made me think of it and it's also a hilarious wordless picture story which um <laughs> you see all the different things that happen because of these frogs flying around which um is a great one for the quiet prompt so another one for the prompt green the tim forest by helen ward and wayne anderson all about it's beautifully illustrated story all about a man who lives in a scrapyard in the middle of nowhere where there are a lot of forgotten things that no one wants he lives in a landfill site um, and eventually he starts making his own forest out of tin um but eventually we get some actual green and growth in it so i thought this was a good one for the for shelley's green prompt so one of my favorite books about friendship and this is one for probably more for younger readers but i just love the stunning illustrations in it and it is pumpkin soup by helen cooper and it's just a beautiful book i just want to show you how beautiful these illustrations are and this is the first in a trilogy of books about these three friends who live in the little white cabin in the woods and they are a cat and a squirrel and a duck and they make pumpkin soup together and it's just beautiful i just love the illustrations the story is stunning as well children always love this story when i read it to them and these friends fall out um, and they have an argument and the duck leaves and they have to go and look for the duck and that's them getting really upset and crying into their pumpkin soup and making it extra salty <laughs> but yeah I love this book I love this whole series actually it's the first in a trilogy pumpkin soup's a really good one for the prompt home as well because of the old white cabin and where they live and the home they share together another great book for the prompt of friendship is imaginary fred and it's a collaboration between two great Irish authors Owen Colfer and Oliver Jeffers the illustrator and um, Imaginary Fred it's all about imaginary friends um, and 
these uh, children who have these imaginary friends and what, what, what happens to them when they meet some actual friends, what happens to these imaginary friends. So um, yeah, very funny and delightful story. Another one for the prompt green and a good one for home is Mighty Min, again by Melissa Castrion. Um, I just love this author. This isn't wordless, this is an actual storybook. And she's, uh, Mighty Min is tiny but mighty hoot girl who lives in um, a garden with her aunties and her aunties are always telling these tales of their mighty deeds. Um, so yeah, it's a beautiful book. My final recommendation is this the audiobook of The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse. I recommend the original picture book as well. It's stunning. I don't think it needs much of an introduction, but if you've not heard of it, it's a huge publishing phenomenon. It's a beautiful, philosophical, meandering kind of journey of four friends who kind of represent different facets of people's personalities um, by the brilliant Charles Mackesy, who illustrates it and writes the words. It's not a narrative as such. It is just different sort of messages scenarios some very hopeful some to give you sort of moments of hope in when in the darkness and things like that little messages being kind to yourself is one of the greatest kindnesses said the mole so it's little things like that it's just stunning really gorgeous but it's not this edition that i'm recommending although i do recommend it I'm specifically recommending the audiobook the boy the mole the fox and the horse uh, when i started thinking about picture this it occurred to me uh, that it's not the most inclusive readathon for people who are not able to enjoy books visually. So I did have a little think about audiobooks. The majority of audiobooks for picture books are for children to um, listen to as they sort of turn the page. You know, you get the little bell noise when children can indicate them they can turn the page. So they weren't really what I was looking for when I thought about trying to be more inclusive with audiobooks. I saw this recommended by MJ over at Reading This Life, who has an amazing booktube channel. You should go and check her out. She's wonderful. She recommended this in her best of 2022 video, and I went, I didn't know it was an audiobook, went and listened to it, and it completely blew me away to say that this is an accompaniment to the picture book would be a disservice to this it is an experience in its own right if you loved the picture book and you've not listened to the audiobook i'd urge you to go and get it charles mackesy reads the book and he's got beautifully calm voice and there are moments of complete silence then there are soundscapes which is what I can call the only thing I can call them is soundscapes of nature noises uh, nature sounds and um, beautiful um, original musical score to accompany these gorgeous characters on their journey through the wild through life and I listened to this the first time and it just completely mesmerized me it's only an hour long i wish it had been longer i have listened to it multiple times since i find it a really soothing read uh, it's something that as someone who kind of suffers with anxiety a lot of the time i find this a really mindful peaceful quiet and hopeful thing to listen to and like i said with it's an experience in its own right completely for me separate from the picture book it's just stunning this is such a triumph of a book in its own right it's a completely different way of experiencing this story and it's so immersive and it created such moments of calm and peace and he really created a picture in my mind that no other audiobook I've listened to I loved it so much and I'm wholeheartedly recommending this if anyone else has got any recommendations for uh, audiobook adaptations of picture books I'd ha I'd happily listen to them the only other book I can kind of compare this to audiobook wise is the Sandman adaptation the Neil Gaiman Sandman adaptation on Audible which is a whole experience in its own right as well and something that is completely stands alone as its own thing um, separate from the book and so does this if anyone else has got any recommendations for really visual books that work have been adapted in a really creative way on audio i would love to hear them um, again i didn't want to recommend an audio book uh, of a picture book which is really for children to listen along to while they read this is not that this is an experience in and of itself and one i recommend for adults um, wholeheartedly i loved it 
In terms of the prompts it fits, well, the book and the audiobook both fit the prompt for friendship because of the friendship between these four amazing characters and I think the friend, the prompt for home really because um, it's about the love that these characters have for each other and friendships and family just remind me it, they're, they're like family and it reminds me of home in that sense but in the audiobook format I think it also fits the prompts for quiet because of those absolute moments of quiet and stillness that you get within the audiobook and it also fits the prompts for me for space um, because like I said you can interpret that in any way that you like and for me space also means just space to breathe and think um, and this for me does fit those prompts wonderfully. So those are just some of the recommendations I have for picture books. I can't wait to see what people um, choose for the prompts for Picture This 2022. As I said, the prompts are really open and open for interpretation. And please, if you do take part on Instagram or if you have an Instagram or if you have a YouTube account and you make some content for it, please use the hashtag Picture This 2022 so that Shelley and I can both go over and see and comment and be delighted to see how people interpret these prompts. Uh, that's all for now and hopefully I will see you again here soon. Bye.